Okay, today we're going to be talking about panning. I just wanted to go through a lot of the different panning options uh, so you could see exactly what panning is, how we use it, and then some of the advanced features that we have here. Uh, a lot of this is very timely because we're expecting a new update to Logic in the next you know, few weeks or even months, which is going to allegedly add spatial audio uh, built into it so that we could actually do a lot of our music working inside Logic in preparation to release music on Apple Music, which has spatial audio capabilities. And spatial audio means that it's going to be able to surround us completely. So let's do a little recap on exactly what panning is and how it works. I just opened up a default session, added a piano, uh, and so I don't have a lot of other things set. So this should look like what you would open up if you were opening this up for yourself. And I've got piano. And if you're listening on headphones or with speakers, you'll notice that it's coming in both sides, either in front of you or in the headphones. And so that uh, gives us the sense that the piano's right in front of us. Even though, in the case of headphones, you'll hear it coming directly from the side of your head on both instances, because everything is, or it's very similar in both ears, we end up with what's called a phantom image. The phantom image being right in front of us. And so that is how we hear we hear in relationship to what we have in both ears. Um, for instance, I could pull this all the way to the left with my pan knob. You'll hear what's coming in there. So then it sounds like it's coming out one side or the other. So in the production process, one of the things that we do is line everything up in terms of our stereo image. Uh, and so we need to just, decide where we want all of the different parts of our song. Uh, one way of doing this is by mimicking like a stage performance. What do we want directly in the center? Well, typically you'll have like the, the singer directly in the center and perhaps the drummer behind them on the stage. And then you'll have different guitarists and keyboardists and background singers and bass player. Well, the bass we would have in the center, but um, we think about the stage, all of the other instruments are going to be spread out. And so we might spread them out in our image just like that. Or we could go for something completely unrealistic and just put things wherever we want. Inside Logic, we have three different pan options. If I right click on this, you can see we have stereo pan, which is what I was just talking about. And you'll see that balance is not, e is not the same as stereo pan, but it's the default. And that is, uh, is commonly the default in projects. Uh, and then we have binaural pan. So stereo pan, you can see here we have these little white dots at the edges and the green line in the middle. So that means the piano, the, the left side of the piano and the right side are both now moved over to one side. But the whole thing is there. So we can move it around and get different amounts of this. The default, which is balance, is a, a little different. What it does is if I pull this to the left, it doesn't move what's in the right side over. Uh, it actually just turns off the right side. And so we're left with just what was in the left channel. If we move it to the right, then the right is left all the way up. And well, the right is left all the way up and the left is turned down to nothing. So we're actually losing some information by using the default balance thing. And then we have binaural pan, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Keep in mind that this balance is only here because our original material has a left and a right channel, meaning that the piano that we are hearing was probably recorded with two microphones and so we have that left and right information from the mic setup that we're now using. We can actually balance that. If this was a mono signal, and we can actually do mono tracks in here. Uh, for instance, if we have something in here like the, let's see if any of these, 
you can see, oh, here we have a drum synth, which is mono. And then my pan knob here, that's not a balance anymore because there's no left and right information. All I have is pan and binaural pan. So if the sound source is just one channel, mono, then we just we can pan it to the left or the right. Uh, but if the original source is two channel with a left and a right, then we have stereo pan, which keeps everything there but moves it, or balance, which just turns one side down or the other. Okay, so binaural pan then is something a little different. And it allows us to move things around our head all the way. So if you're on headphones and that's important and you're doing this, then you should have heard it sound kind of like it's going behind you, even though you just have headphones that are staying stationary. This uses a little bit fancier technology, not new technology by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, binaural recordings are over a hundred years old, uh, some of the initial tests. Uh, but you know, this is uh, still good technology. It uses something called a head-related transfer function, which is just a fancy way of saying that uh, they used a, a technique to record the shape of people's heads so that they can mimic using uh, essentially like an equalizer and, and delays uh, to mimic how sound comes at your actual face. And then we apply those same characteristics to our sound to mimic as it goes around your head. That means that they don't exactly match what you're expecting because they didn't measure your head. They, they measured other people's heads. And um, so it's, it's close, but it's not perfect, but it is close. The one thing I'll say about this is if you're using the binaural pan, then you have to, inside logic, to get the best effect, uh, use what's called the binaural post-processor later in the signal chain. And um, this helps optimize it for various things. So we have optimization for front direction. So if we want to really care about what's coming from the front, for all horizontal, for all directions, and then we can actually put this on if we want to do this for a speaker playback. So we put that in the chain. And we can move things around our head. Okay, so binaural panning. We use that primarily for headphones. That's when we get the best results for this. Um, mostly because that's how, that's like the location of where we're, we've originally measured it. And that's what the tools are expecting. So for headphone playback, which it works out really great in this modern era because almost everybody's listening with headphones at various times. And so it's a really great tool. So we have the, the balance knob, the stereo pan, uh, and the, the actual binaural panner for stereo. And then we just have the pan knob when it's a mono source. And we have the binaural for mono as well. That leads us into surround sound panning. And this is a little trickier to showcase uh, because with surround sound panning, uh, you need multiple actual destinations positioned around you, meaning speakers. Uh, if I want to do a setup, and I'm going to go show you the ones that we can do in Logic at least, uh, we, we have these six different formats. Quadraphonic, four-channel. LCRS, four-channel. Um, 5.1, which is five main speakers and one subwoofer, so six channels total. This one is 6.1, so seven channels. Then we have two ones that require eight channels. So a 7.1 would require seven speakers located around you and then uh, a subwoofer. So because we have all those requirements, I can't demonstrate it here like on a thing like YouTube because it's only really designed for stereo audio. And uh, in fact, in this spot that I'm sitting, I don't have... Um, 
seven speakers anyway or the room for those so most of the time uh, it really is the best way to, to get that spatial effect is to use the binaural panner um, or if you want to if you're working on a very specific task like for post-production or even dolby atmos then there are some things we can do with that but uh, that requires things outside of logic to really make work let me show you the 5.1 though so we have that selected i come down here in my channel under output and i say surround output and then my panner turns into this and it shows us the approximate location of the speaker and then i can move things around to each of those i can turn on or off the speakers etc now i will say the one exception to this if you want to do surround panning and you uh, don't have the speakers, you can buy a third party solution for this. In this case, I'm using Waves, something like the Abbey Road plugin, and uh, the headphone tracker, which is on my headphones right up here. Let me turn that on. And then I can actually mix in surround sound using. Uh, just a pair of headphones. You aren't going to hear this. But you will hear something happening because my head is actually moving right now. You can see uh, the image in the middle of the Abbey Road thing. That's my head moving back and forth. So I can actually do things in surround using plugins to, to emulate that. Let's turn that back off. Okay, cool. So we have all of those different surround sound panning options to move things around, but it's harder to play that back uh, because people need to have some mechanism to actually recreate the surround sound, either speakers uh, or they need to have a plugin like that uh, to do it. But the plugin, I would say, is less common, um, but so are the speakers having that many speakers. Uh, okay, so. That all being said, um, there's a few more smaller things to discuss about the panning things. Okay, so here's an example then of an actual song that has some panning. You can see the panning along here with the knobs. And so I wanna showcase just some of the things that we might do with this so you can um, and see and hear a little bit about it. So first and foremost, we have drums which are right down the middle but they're a stereo source which means the drums themselves are spread across the stereo image and this is a a drummer instrument uh, so you can actually see for instance um, we don't have any control over the panning inside here but each of these are recorded and played back using various microphones. So those handle themselves a little bit. Then we have um, this Rhodes part, which is panned a little bit to the left using the stereo pan. And then the bass is right down the middle. So listen to those right now. So that piano part is a little bit off to one side, but not all the way. So kind of off a little bit. And then the voice, we have the main vocal, but we also have a secondary harmony part, and that harmony part is just slightly over to one side. Is it because of who I am? A tall, strong man. But we have this Rhodes keyboard and the piano split out. And one of the reasons for that is that I'm always looking for symmetry in the mixes. Uh, either it doesn't have to be exact symmetry, but perceived symmetry. You don't want the entire mix to be in the left channel or the entire mix to be in the right channel. 
sometimes we can do that for a very specific effect if we're trying to do something. But for the most part, uh, we're looking to have kind of this, this balance so that when you're listening, you don't think about it. You just think about the important part of the song, which could be the lyrics or the vocal or a solo or some other texture. So skipping ahead, we add some horns when the piano drops out. So then we have the roads and the horns actually on one side, which is okay. But um, certainly I think once we're into the song, uh, there's reasons we could flip those if we needed to. I heard you say something today I'd never heard you say before I saw a fire in your eyes A truth behind your careful lies I saw you break into a place Okay, then we go into this section, which goes into the second verse. Um, right here. So that synth part, by the way, this song is still not fully mixed. It's still in progress, but um, that synth part is all over the place. We actually have it panned out using several tools. This one pans everything out by the frequency. So you can see everything that goes above the red line is panned to the left. Anything below it's to the right. Um, and these are low frequencies and these are high frequencies. So we're panning it out using a very specialized tool. Uh, but on top of that, the original tool here also did some panning effect. So it was panning out in two different places. And the, it's not one of them kind of nullifies the other. But um, you'll hear that synth part moving around a little bit around your ears. And I, I like that because it adds a little bit of interesting character to it. <laughs> And then we go to the second chorus, which is uh, going to be replace the vocals, but you'll hear there are some uh, background vocals, which are here. And we moved the brass to one side, so we're going to move those to the other side, just to keep on that, that balance a little bit. I heard you say something today. I never heard you say Left and right. Lies. I saw you break into a place, a place I never knew was there. I saw you burn into the ground. I tried to see my wasn't scared. I need to know what is inside. I see the truth, it isn't mine. You were ignored, but not today. And with your heat, it melts away just as the sun. Okay, so we use panning for a few reasons. Here's another view of the pan knobs down here. We use panning to help everything fit together uh, better. Meaning, if everything was stacked in one place along the stereo image, then there's only so much that we can handle in terms of all of the frequencies. If everything has like the same low frequencies, the same middle frequencies, and the same high frequencies, and they're all just layered one on top of each other, then it's going to be, it's going to sound confusing. It's going to sound unclear. The, the image won't have a lot of interest to it. And so it causes issues. We could use other tools to carve out space for those, but panning is an initial step that helps us 
by moving things away from each other so they're not stepping quite as much on each other. Then we can use other tools to continue to sculpt their places in our final production. Uh, and so moving things away is that great step. Uh, the other thing it does is help bring balance. Uh, and so we don't just have a bunch of random things in random places. It sounds like a cohesive ensemble or a cohesive production. Uh, meaning that we have thought about the balance across the entire stereo image and we're putting things in, in places to uh, to help everything fit. And so the person listening isn't distracted, uh, but they can just jam out to the tune, sing along with the lyrics or, you know, dance or whatever. And so that becomes important. The last thing is that we want to make sure that we're compatible with as many venues and listening situations as possible. Uh, so for instance, if your music is going to be played in a club um, and they are using a stereo playback system, which isn't always the case, but a lot of times it is, and you put like your snare drum and your bass in one side of your mix, then the people who are standing next to the other speaker uh, they're going to not have access. They're not going to hear the like perhaps the most important part of the rhythmic part of the song. And so we want to make sure we put the most important things uh, in the middle so that everyone's hearing them no matter where they're sitting or what system they're using. Uh, I mean, it's, it wasn't too long ago that iPhones were still mono when they played music. Um, they're stereo now, but I mean, it's just there's places that uh, this is still an issue and so we want to make sure that uh, things are uh, placed properly so that you get the maximum uh, experience when people are listening to it in the biggest variety of places we're not going to talk about mono compatibility right now that's a, a different topic for a different day but that does play into it as well okay so all of the different panners um, that we have in logic and the surround options all of these things are used in different ways at different times for different reasons. And so I think just understanding each of them becomes the, the first priority. And then when you come up against a situation where you need to use one of them, you'll have that tool in your toolkit. But um, the this video is not going to go through every single one of them in a deeper way than that. Okay, hope you enjoyed this look at panning. Hope it all makes sense. Uh, and that's it for today.